Hi, welcome to What is G minus 2 of the muon? Part 1. So, muon G minus 2 is very closely related to something called the anomalous magnetic moment of the muon. So, in this video, we're going to talk about what a magnetic moment is. So, the magnetic moment of the muon is an important observable in particle physics. But magnetic moments also occur in electromagnetism, which is a bit more familiar to most people. So, here we'll start by looking at a scenario involving a magnetic moment in electromagnetism. In part two, we'll see what this has to do with particle physics. Okay, so let's imagine the following scenario. Let's imagine that we have a ring oriented in the horizontal plane. We're also going to have some charge glued to this ring, and that charge is going to be negative. So you can imagine that we just glued some electrons to this ring. Next, this ring is going to be located in a uniform magnetic field, which we call B, and this uniform magnetic field is pointing upward. And then lastly, this ring is going to be spinning in the direction shown by the arrow. Now, a charge moving in a magnetic field will experience a force and that force will be perpendicular to the velocity of the charge and perpendicular to the applied magnetic field. So in the case of these charges that we've glued to the ring, they will experience a force in the horizontal plane outward from the ring. So here the force that is experienced by the charges glued to the ring is represented by the red arrows. Okay, so now let's think about an altered scenario. Here we're still going to have a uniform magnetic field pointing in the vertical direction, and we're still going to have a spinning ring. But this time we've tilted the ring relative to the horizontal plane. Now again, a charge moving in a magnetic field will experience a force. And that force will be perpendicular to the velocity of that charge and also perpendicular to the applied magnetic field. Now here again we have a magnetic field pointing in the vertical direction. That means that all of the forces experienced by these charges due to the applied magnetic field have to be in the horizontal plane. So, for example, if we look at a charge over on the right-hand side of this ring, it will experience a force pointing to the right in the horizontal plane. On the other hand, a charge on the left-hand side of this ring will experience a force to the left, but still in the horizontal plane. Now, this puts a torque on the ring. And if you want to keep the ring in this configuration, you have to apply an equal and opposite torque in order for that to happen. It also has a consequence if you want to change the orientation of the ring. So if you want to take the ring from this orientation to this one, you have to put in some energy. Now, how much energy do you have to put in? Well, we could calculate it, but we won't. Instead, we're just going to write down an expression that will be useful to us in this discussion. Okay, so let's call the angle that we tilted the ring by theta. So the energy of a particular orientation of the ring at an angle theta is given by the following expression. So the energy E is equal to minus 
mu.b, which in case you're unfamiliar with the dot product, is equal to minus the magnitude of mu, the magnitude of b, cosine theta. Now here, b is the magnetic field that we saw earlier, and mu is what is called the magnetic dipole moment of the ring. Okay, so again, let's look at that energy equation. So E is equal to minus mu dot B, which is equal to minus the magnitude of mu, the magnitude of B cosine theta. So for the case where theta is equal to zero, which is the case where we haven't tilted the ring at all, E is equal to minus the magnitude of mu, the magnitude of B. On the other hand, for the case where theta is equal to 180 degrees, so this is where we've flipped the ring over completely, E is equal to the magnitude of mu, the magnitude of B. So this tells us that it takes an energy of two, absolute value of mu, absolute value of B, to flip the ring over. Okay, so we should note that there are other interesting things about magnetic dipole moments. For example, the magnetic dipole moment of the ring can also tell us about the magnetic field generated by the rotating ring. But here, we'll just pay attention to how it relates to the interaction between the external magnetic field and the ring. Now, magnetic dipole moments aren't relevant just to rings of charge. Particles can also have magnetic dipole moments. So let's start with a particle we're more familiar with, the electron. So the electron has a characteristic called spin. Spin is angular momentum that is carried by a particle, in this case the electron and the electron has a spin of one half. If we measure the spin of an electron along some axis, it will be observed as pointing either up or down along that axis. If it points up, we say the spin in that direction is one half. If it points down, we say the spin in that direction is minus one half. Now the electron also has charge. So the electron is a charged object that has some angular momentum, spin. So this is starting to look like something that might remind us of our spinning charged ring. Now it might be tempting to think of the electron as a spinning charged ball. That's okay if it helps you think about it but it's important to know that spin is an intrinsically quantum mechanical concept. So if you want to think of it as a spinning ball, keep in mind that it's really just a cartoon to give a way of visualizing it. And don't take that cartoon too literally. But here are the takeaway points. The electron has spin, charge, and it also has a magnetic moment. Okay, so let's take a uniform magnetic field B, again pointing in the vertical direction. The energy of the electron is related to the direction its spin is pointing relative to the magnetic field. So like with the ring, the energy is equal to minus the magnetic moment dotted into the magnetic field B. Now here we've called the electron magnetic moment mu with a subscript E. But this time the magnetic moment is related to the electron spin. So the magnetic moment of the electron is given by this somewhat mysterious looking expression. So mu sub e is equal to g sub e times e over 2 m e times s. 
So now let's take a look at that expression and make sure that we know what each of those factors is. Okay, so here's our expression from the previous slide. So first of all, S is the spin of the electron. Second, E is the charge of the electron. Next, Me is the mass of the electron. And lastly, this quantity G sub E is a number that we need to determine. And so we see that finally, the letter G has shown up in this video on muon G minus two. Okay, so we had these two relations, that the energy is equal to minus the magnetic moment dotted into the B field, and that the magnetic moment is equal to GE times the charge of the electron over twice the mass of the electron times the spin. Now, the charge of the electron E is negative, and this actually means that the magnetic moment of the electron points in the opposite direction to the electron's spin. So if we have a magnetic field pointing up, an electron whose spin is also pointing up, parallel to the B field, has an energy equal to the absolute value of the magnetic moment of the electron times the magnetic field. On the other hand, an electron that has its spin pointing down anti-parallel to the magnetic field has an energy equal to minus the absolute value of the magnetic moment times the B field. Okay, so, so far we've talked about the familiar electron, but as far as we know, the muon is identical to the electron except that its mass is larger. So luckily everything that we've said carries over to the muon case. So again, we have a relation. The magnetic moment of the muon is equal to g mu times e over 2 m mu times s. And again, s is equal to the spin, this time of the muon. e is equal to the charge of the muon, which is the same as the charge of the electron. m sub mu is the mass of the muon. And again, g mu is a number that we need to determine. Now, for both the electron and the muon, g is a number that is very close to two. We'll discuss this and why we talk about g minus two instead of g in part two. And just, we should note that often the subscript mu is left off of the g if it's clear that it's the muon that we're talking about. So the g in g minus two of the muon is g mu. And sometimes you might also see the notation g minus two, all with a subscript of mu. Okay. So now we have some idea what the G is in G minus two of the muon. We'll see how this relates to particle physics in part two.